What's up, guys? So I think we'll uh, set the tarp up here. It's um, pretty level. Got two sort of like trees that'll be ideal for um, stringing up the tarp. I think I shift this this dead tree here. Uh, you never know. Might be uh, good firewood, but um, you know, we'll clear a space on the floor and have a tiny little tiny little fire just to cook up our bacon and bits and pieces. Everything's absolutely saturated. The uh, the streams are running wild, so they're pretty good. Um, yeah, so let's get cracking. So I've ordered myself a um, dry sack um, instead of this um, compression sack that the BD tarp comes in. I want to be able to stuff it in. Um, might be a little bit bigger, a little bit bulkier, but uh, if it's that way, it can always get strapped underneath my um, backpack, much the same as like the larvae does. Um, but I want it like easy to sort of like get out and set up, really quick set up, that's what I'm aiming for. Cat's hairs everywhere. Right guys, so for this one, this is my guide line I'm going to set up. I've got a loop around the end of the line. I'm going to go around the tree at arm's length above me. I've got to be able to walk underneath the tarp. And then I'm going to go over, back, and I'm going to free up a bit of slack so that that can go right the way around and through to here. Okay? Then, with a stick, you pick up beforehand, ideally. But of course I didn't. So with the stick, you take that free end with the loop, you take the main line, go back through it, creating a loop like that, put the stick through there, and then you can ratchet down on it. Like that. And then that'll stay there. That's not going to go anywhere. That's not going to go anywhere then. So that then you've got the free line that you can go back and do the other knot. And I'll show you which knot I'm going to do on the other side. Okay, on this end, I'm going to do a trucker's knot. So again, at arm's length at the top, I'm going to take my line, I'm going to walk around the tree, and then with the hand, I'm going to go uncomfortable, so you've got comfortable, comfortable, uncomfortable. I'm going to pinch it, release some slack, twist it, then with my fingers in between, I'm going to pull the cord back through and back, back to me, and that creates a loop there. You can feed your line through that, and then that gives you a ratchet to be able to pull that. Now you can either pinch it and then tie it, tie it off, or if you've got like this, I'm going to just sort of feed it through, give myself some slack here, and that's me. And then when I want to release, I can just pull this line and the whole thing. If you're here for a little while, you can just put a stick through that and pull that tight. You can be very similar direct to the knot if you haven't got anything on the tree. But I'm just making my life easy and just doing it off to that, and then I could just pull it down through. And that's that. Right, that being done, 
I've got the my tarp strung just through the centre loop and that gives me freedom to be able to either go triangle or rectangle. Now I know in my last video I was in just setting the tarp up for the first time. Since then I've been done a bit of research, watched uh, MCQ's bushcraft um, video on quick tarp setup and stuff like that. So it's always a learning process and it's great to sort of share knowledge and again I'm just sharing knowledge that um, has been shared elsewhere. Right anyway back to what I'm doing. So like I said it's in the centre of the tarp so that way I can go at different angles. I can sort of set it up as either a pyramid or I can set it up as like you know, just my usual sort of like um, rectangle sort of A-frame um, style. Um, and then that gives me a lot more flexibility. Now what I'm going to do for the end ones is I'm going to set up some pressics. Um, I've got some different colour cordage and slightly thinner cordage um, already sort of tied up on the end, just a loop tied up on the end. And what I'm going to do, ideally you'd want like a bit of bungee cord would be ideal. Um, I don't have any so I'm going to go with this and I'm going for a different colour on the, on the line so that it's easy to see. I know where I'm at. So all you do is you feed it round you feed the other end through once, pull it down, I do anyway, just to give it a little bit of neatness. And then I feed it through again, pull it down, work it together, and that gives you uh, like a monkey grip. So when it's sort of like really pulled tight, it shouldn't sort of slide around, ideally. There we go. So when it's pulled tight, it won't slide around it will sort of like grip on the line but then when it sort of loosened up a little bit it'll move freely on the line what I'll do is I'll just use um, some toggles on the end of, of the corner of the line and then that'll give me sort of tension for whichever side I decide to go through I've got on the other side here do exactly the same I feed it up around around on the inside going down through tightening that and then it won't go anywhere I loosen it up get myself some space and take them right down the end of the lines getting out of the way so I can take that Take the press it, feed that through, and I can get that one through there, like that, and I can feed that round and around the other end, and then that's got the thing. It doesn't have to be this big, I will tie it off and make it smaller. I don't think I'll actually run it that big, but for example, I was just showing you so that you could see. should be fine. Now I can just cinch that off to where I want it to be. Go around there. Now, just, now I can just pull that tight. That's it. And now I can just tie down each corner to the trees or to the floor whatever I need to do and then that gives me my uh, job. That's us under shelter. Now ideally, sort of like I said, um, once it's in the dry sack and it's all set up like this um, for quick use, you're set up in a matter of minutes. It won't take half as long as this and uh, you'll be like, under shelter from the elements and uh, enjoying life. Just lifted one corner up here 
by tying it off to the tree, just so that it gives me a bit of a outlook across the forest. I'm going to get rid of this um, tree here, put my gloves on, and um, I'll set up a fire uh, just probably here because it's absolutely sodden, just, just sort of like just outside the park there, I expect. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'll try and figure that one out where I'm going to do my fire. still attached to the ground a little bit there so free the upper jacks. Definitely a good bit of dry material in there though so I think I'll uh, utilise that and cut that up a bit. That'll give me give me what to set it up. So I went and collected a few little rocks. I've not gone crazy, just um, enough that I can shield the worst of the heat from um, the roots there. So I'm not going to have a big fire, just a little one, but that will shield the the heat getting into it. Just pack that out. A bit of wet. A bit of earth. There we go. So that'll just give me enough that I can just have the tiny little fire on top. Enough to um, cook up the bacon. That's better. No problem now is I've positioned my fire in the wrong place. Because the last thing I want is that. Action on my hammock. I think I'll just move my fire. So, like I said, I've got my really fine stuff, my finger light stuff, but that's absolutely saturated, so that's going to take some light in with the birch bark and everything else that I've sort of got here for kindling, the fire lighter rather. And then what I'll do is um, that tree that I moved a minute ago, and I saw that up and split some of that down um, for a base and then for adding fuel afterwards. I want to try and contain it for this, so what I'll probably do is I'll, I'll cut some bigger pieces of that tree, the really wet stuff, and leave that round the outside to give myself a bit of a, a bit of a screen to stop things from rolling away and things like that. One thing for you guys who followed me, I'm sure you know I absolutely hate using tools with my glove. No good in the winter, I've got no choice when it's sort of snowing and all the rest of it's cold. But I tell you, I don't know why, I think it's because I dislocated my little finger when I was in the trades. and. Um, Every time I grip with a glove, it just sort of like pulls on that joint and just hurts. So I just don't bother. Sort of like. So 
So, I've got my axe. I'll take the sheath off. I'll pocket that so I don't misplace it and use it, lose it. I'm going to take this piece that I didn't use because of the knots and things. I'm going to place it on the ground in a sturdy place. And I'm going to use that because I haven't got any big logs to come off of. I'm going to use that to split my wood here. that now. Split it in two. Really easy. I'm going to split it again. And lay Max on the flat side. And that's split nice. Now this is all lovely dry inside in the core. And that's why you split. Because then you've got nice dry wood to get your fire going. Do something a little bit different today. Somehow managed to turn my t-shirt into a uh, vest. <laughs> and another one down. There we go. Nice. So some tinder that I gathered when it was lovely and warm. Because it's so wet, and because it is what it is, I'm going to put some bark underneath it anyway because I haven't done a great deal of this type of fire lighting and I don't want it to go out, but I'll start the fire this way at least. Flint and steel with, if you follow me on Instagram, I made out of a t-shirt and I twist it up. Um, made like rope out of a strip of 100% um, cotton t-shirt and then I put it in the tin, burn it, a hole in it, making the jar cloth. I've got a wee bit left in here as it is, so um, hopefully I can shower a, uh, a spark down onto that and we can get it into our tin, tinder bundle here. One thing I was doing wrong in the past is I had it really wide rather than long so I'm going to try and not do that here. So I said I'm going to put the bark down onto the base there. I know it's a lot I'm not messing about today. So I've got my bundle ready. Place. Sparking tea. Now you've got two options, you can either put your char cloth on the end of your flint and try and light it that way. Ways, you flip it round and you have the stone
That's us now. Okay. I'm going to place that into my tender bundle. So I'm not messing about today. I've got some perch here, so. Smothered it a bit. So, with the fire going now, um, I want to rig up a simplistic method of just um, hanging the kettle over the top. So I've been out and collected what I need for my pot hanger. Um, I've just picked up this wee Y here. I'll pop that one into this old log. That hole enough. I also picked up this top of this tree here. It was just leaning dead. So I'll have that hanging over the top like this. So find a way just to wedge that face into there. It. And then what I'll do is I'll peg oh, on top of the top. I'll peg the um, base of it in there, and we can hang the pot on the top of this one. Very spitty fire because of the material that I'm using is quite resinous, um, and because of that, like I said, I wanted it away from outside of the tarp so that I didn't end up picking up any stray sparks onto my top of my tarp.
So while the fire ticks away there, I'm going to drink my cup of tea. Um, and uh, I've got my char cloth out there, so I've just got that sitting to one side now, because I'm sure that's done. Uh, I've been in there quite a while. So while we sit here and just relax for a minute, I've got a book to read. I'll have a read of that in a little bit and chill out for an hour or so. Um, feed the fire a little bit with what I've got left there. And um, then we'll get the bacon off. Get some bacon. I've got the pancakes I made again. So similar to my last video because obviously um, today is literally one day later. So um, I enjoyed it quite a bit yesterday. So I've brought four pancakes along. Very good. Three, four, four, four. Four pancakes and some bacon so I can make myself um, a couple sort of like bacon sandwiches for pancakes rocking yesterday I really enjoyed that but um, so we'll get that on again in a minute we'll have a bit more elaborate cooking um, in up and coming videos but uh, I'm going for a real sort of simple just come out in the basher and sort of like get the hammock on and just chill out so I didn't want to be going whole hog into cooking so my other half got me this for my birthday as well it's uh, Lars Fultz, um Outdoor Scandinavian Way. Outdoors the Scandinavian Way. So I look forward to reading this. Having a quick scan through it when I got it. Looks absolutely fantastic and uh, should be a really good read. So uh, I've got the um, bacon on here, but, uh, I do wish I had some hardwood smoke or something to utilise for cooking this bacon on, I must admit. Nice and warm. Char grilled on that one. Better move fast and then I lose my um lose my bacon.
I love this hammock set up at the top. So comfortable. It's a different level of sort of bike comfort because like I absolutely love the lava and um, that setup. But being down that close to the floor and on the floor and things like that is um, I mean I'm 37 and I've got a bad back and like so being <laughs> being down on the floor can be a little bit uncomfortable at times. Whereas being up in this hammock and being lifted off the ground and having a seat and just being dry and comfortable. A different place for both, I suppose. You know, the hammock and everything is fantastic for days like today, where it's not overly cold, it's just wet and it's fine like that. I mean, if I had like a full, thick under, under blanket for the hammock and things, that'd be something totally different. But like the setup as it is at the moment, like this, wouldn't hold up for any real cold winter camping or anything like that. Um, and the lavu is like solid tent and now with the stove that I've got I can turn it into like a bright little hot tent and sort of like really comfortable all year round no matter what. Well guys, another great morning in the woods, beautiful rainy weather, I hope um, I managed to show you a few things that you didn't necessarily know, um, and I had to set up the tarp and different things like that, and like the fire lighting and things, didn't always go right, didn't go to plan, but you know what, it doesn't always go to plan, it's about having that patience to keep going, keep trying, do alternative methods and uh, you'll get there and it'll work for you but um, sometimes it's just literally being persistent and sticking to it and keeping going but um, I think it's important that I show you the times that it doesn't always go right you know in previous videos I might not necessarily done that I think I was going for more of a um, RE, you know, it's got to look right sort of type thing, but you know what, I think it's more important that I show you that it doesn't always go right, you don't always like it first time, you don't always get everything set up how you want it to be, you're in the woods, you're out in the wild, things don't always go perfectly, you're not in this constructed, perfect, everything's perfectly square, everything's perfectly sort of like, you know, <coughs> all the perfect material to work with work with what you got and uh, keep trying and you get there. I think that's part of bushcraft is just sort of like learning to work with what you have at hand and I'm still learning same as anyone else I don't think you ever stop learning I think um, it's gonna be something that I'll be spending the rest of my life learning and honing my skills I know there's several courses that I want to do and um, to learn more and especially about sort of like plant life and understanding more about um, my surroundings and the different plant life and everything. I know a little bit, I don't know enough and I think that's something that I can um, improve my knowledge on as time goes on. But um, we'll do that together and we'll um, I'll take you on that journey and as I learn things I'll share that knowledge on with you. Well guys, that's me done for another day. 
thanks for watching hope you really enjoyed the video and um, if you did please like and subscribe and i'll see you next time thanks guys one thing cleared the, cleared the fire no trace at all the ground's cold no heat in it whatsoever so that's how to safely have a fire in a spruce forest even when it's wet it's always worth making sure that you leave absolutely no trace bye now